Hello. Welcome to Janet Davis's demo, Bad Cat, a Whimsical Painting in Guam. Janet has been involved in water media painting for 40 years and has taught at the Volan Center in Boca Raton for 10 years. Janet was employed three years by a business creating designs for McDonald's, JCPenney, and Coca-Cola promotional she enjoys the whimsical in her creations and mainly paints happy, colorful watercolor, gouache, and acrylic, enjoying a variety of styles. She has exhibited in several one-woman shows and numerous art shows over the years, taking home honors. Her weekly painting sessions with friends keep the interest alive. They attend the Florida Watercolor Society convention together yearly, along with other events. Now well, here's Janet. I think I'm here. <laughs> I'm almost here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you first um, a little bit about my materials. You probably all have known about materials for ages, but people seem to have a lot of questions about gouache. So I brought my sets of gouache that I have. I also have uh, about a 16 by 16 box about this deep full of different colors of gouache. Um, I find that um, <clears throat> There, um, you can buy them in individual tubes. There's gouache that's truly gouache. That's what's best. But now, everywhere I go, I find the acrylic gouache, which is acrylic. It's gouache, but it's acrylic. It dries. You can't get it off. But the regular gouache, you can. So I have a combination just because I like certain colors. I'll go ahead and buy the acrylic gouache. This is a mixing set of five colors. This is what you generally get hooked on if you ever start with gouache. <laughs> and uh, then this is an acrylic gouache. This has the acrylic gouache. They're the same thing except one you can remove and the other you can't. And I do prefer the one that you can't, but I use both just because, as I said, of the colors. And then there's uh, something that's pretty new that came out. This is a set of 12, and you can also buy colors individually. This is called Japanese color, and it's muted shades, and it's the latest set of gouache that I've seen. But it's really pretty, nice, soft, muted colors. J-A-P-A-N-E-S-Q-U-E, it was in Jerry's Artorama. Um, I, they're just all softer colors. I like the muted colors. Well, a lot of my colors are real bright, but I like the muted type shades. When I paint, I usually start, well, let me tell you about the other things first. Color wheel, you all know about color wheels and your value studies. I look at them sometimes. I don't look at them all the time. I've been painting long enough to know what colors I enjoy and don't enjoy. I also know um, the color complements. So we probably all of you know them. I use tracing paper here and there. Uh, I find that I can be in the middle of having everything on my paper and think my painting's almost done and find that there's something that isn't quite right and I want to change. I might get out my tracing paper and start drawing and put some little something in here later on. I might trace it on later on to make my painting complete. But I do start usually drawing on sketch paper or tracing paper.
This is called Duralar. How many of you have ever used Duralar? It's an acetate. Isn't it a lifesaver? <laughs> I use it. Um, I use it if I want to maybe decide what color I want to paint on something. You can put it right on your painting and paint your color on the acetate. It can be acrylic or watercolor or gouache, in my case, gouache at this point. And if you don't like it, you can not use that color and you haven't hurt your painting. And you can also change it out and keep trying until you find a color you like that's going to go with something that you're interested in using in your painting. I just was fortunate enough to become a signature member of Florida Watercolor just last year. So I'm real thrilled with that. And again, I entered this year and I got in again. This is my painting that's in for this year. The name of it is Serving Fish Dinner. And it doesn't have a question mark behind it, but there is a question. The question is, are the fish going to dinner or are the fish going to be served for dinner? So if you study the painting, you'll see there could be a question there. So look for it tonight. That's gouache. This is all gouache. This painting is controversial. Because <laughs> a lot of people tell me they really don't like it. But I like it. So it doesn't matter. The name of this painting is Black Swan Meets Spirit in the Sky. I call it a spiritual painting. Some people might call it whimsical. It's also that. But it is a spiritual painting deep down. If you have questions, ask them as we go along. Or comments. I'm happy with comments. I'm going to ask you this question. Is this spiritual or is it whimsical or is it serious? Do you know any artist that paints this way? <laughs> There's another artist that really paints this way. And if you knew him, you'd reckon. I didn't copy anything from Smuka or Mucha. It's during the Art Deco period. But he's a very famous artist. And this is kind of his style. But I didn't copy anything from what he does. And I had so much fun painting these flowers. You know, sometimes you love painting a painting, and sometimes it's laborious, laborious, that's the word. But this was just, it was so easy and fun to paint because, I, I don't know, for some reason, it just uh, gave me a lot of feeling. And the name of this is In the Garden of Good. And it would make you feel good if you were there, I'm sure. Uh, this painting, uh, I think, is watercolor, and then I have gouache in it, too, but it's watercolor and gouache. Sometimes I even have acrylic in my painting. This painting is all acrylic. So I do some of all, but lately it seems like I've been heading toward the gouache or I go back to it. Okay. I'm just showing you so you know my style. Yes, ma'am. Uh, these are copies or prints, but the paper I use is 140-pound uh, arches, not arches, um, Fabriano, Art Artistica Fabriano. And I really do like working on it. But after I listened to um, Mark Mahaffey and somebody else was saying this in their demos too, putting the gesso on it, especially on the back, I think, would help it to keep it, well, you'd have to do it on both sides to keep it from buckling. But I haven't done that yet, but I have painted on gold gesso. So this painting was done on gold gesso, and this was the second painting I got into Florida watercolor some years ago. Um, I think Judy Morris was the judge, and she said that she selected the painting because she couldn't walk by it without smiling. 
So smiling got me in. <laughs> and it's a real fun painting. It wasn't serious, obviously, but the cat was a cushion. And someone else told me I should put a real cat in there. And I said, no, there's not going to be a real cat in here. Yes. Pardon? No, this, these are just prints. But cold. Yeah, 140 pound cold. I'm sorry. This, you can tell I like cats by some of the things you're seeing here. This uh, is a painting that I did. Another painting did just was, and this, this painting too, I was in my living room and looking around and trying to decide what I wanted to paint. And I thought, oh, I just have no idea. I was going to a workshop. You know Susan Hansen? She's wonderful. I love her. Um, I was going to her workshop the next day, and I drew. I was sitting in my living room looking at things, and then I had a painting that had this kind of a thing in it on the wall that I had painted. This chair is similar to one I have in my house. So I just started putting things together, and I had this totally drawn out, and went to her workshop the next day, and she said, I want the class to know I'm not talking to Janet. She is going to do this painting on her own because she's going to enter it in Florida watercolor. <laughs> so I painted it in her, in her workshop, but she gave me no advice. And it did get in. So that was a fortunate event. This painting is, um, I used to go to the islands a lot, and it was always fun. Always loved the snorkeling, the diving, and everything else. But the fun thing I had with this painting is, that I didn't take it seriously when I painted it all. And the bottom isn't necessarily the same as the top. And the cat jumped over the moon. I don't know how it got there, but it did. <laughs> and it loved it. You can tell I like cats. I've had um, four black cats. Always have a little bit of white, but I'm not superstitious. But always had a little bit of white. <laughs> and now I have a tuxedo cat, which is wonderful. This is a... Um, a who? Kandinsky. I don't, I've heard of Kandinsky, but I really couldn't tell you I know Kandinsky's work. No, this is a painting that um, obviously is on the spiritual side. Anybody know Claire Dorst, Professor Claire Dorst, in, uh, taught at FAU University? Professor Emeritus or Emeritus? How do you say it? Good. <laughs> That's what Claire was. He, I took some workshops from him. And he was the most inspirational person that I have ever taken any, any uh, workshops from. Did you all go to any of Professor Doris? No. He's wonderful. So I really enjoyed it. Uh, the painting, I started, I was in his workshop, and I just started drawing with, he said to use a black marker thing or something, and I started, and I just started working on it, and he came over and looked at it, and he said, I think you're finished. And he hadn't even seen any of it, but I was finished with it that fast. It just sort of came out of the blue, and it was, uh, I don't guess it was um, just an emotional kind of a thing that happened. And I really love the painting. I love all of them. Don't get me wrong, I love all of them. This painting, you talk about trouble. When I started this painting, it was just a very plain uh, piece of mound of sand kind of thing here, and then a road through it. And I had like two mountain things, all very ugly and plain. And I looked at it, and I looked at it again, and then I, I just started working on it. I think I worked on this two and a half years before I finished it. I kept changing it and changing it. But I finally, finally got it painted. And um, if you look at it carefully, it, all the paintings I do tell a story in one way or another. And I don't know how, but they do. But this one ended up with a little road through it, and there's little angels in here, here and there. And the road comes from here, it went around here, and came up here, and up here, and off through here. And then it got to the castle in the sky. Someone looked at this painting and said, I don't care what you do to the rest of your painting, but don't you ever move that castle out of there. <laughs> so this was another painting. This was a... Hmm. Um, I think this painting has everything in it. I think I started with watercolor, and I know that I have some gouache in it, and I know that I have some acrylic in it, so it's a combination. The name of this painting is Lewis and Clark were here. So 
so you have an idea of my styles. You know I like color. So we'll talk about what uh, we're doing today. The painting I'm doing is a painting that I have done in the past. I thought I'd do something safe. It's a lot easier to be safe. So I am doing this painting again. <clears throat> Once again, I was sitting in my living room. Not that I spend all my time there. I did have a full-time job. I was a real estate paralegal for many, many years. And it was never boring. And I did love it. <clears throat> this is another painting. This is the painting that I'm doing. This is my, was my living room, but then wasn't that crowded together. Doing the painting is just interesting. Okay. Uh, I started this painting. with a sketch. I just started drawing pieces of things to put together. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, so this is just kind of a beginning sketch. And um, I added the chair later, and I think I actually had it on my paper and was already painting it at that point. And then I thought it was kind of blah looking, so I ended up putting on a vase in the middle. You can see all these things as I'm talking. Drew that and put it on. Um, at first I had drawn this little table type thing with the vase and decided that I would use that. And the chair, if you look at it, things aren't really accurate when I paint. I just go for the feeling and the mood more than I go for anything else. And um, I'm not much for dimension as far as depth or perception. I like the flat look. I, I enjoy it. Um, I have, well, some of the paintings are more complex than others, but um, I like the flat look. That's probably why I enjoy the gouache so much. So this drawing, when I did this drawing, this is the way the drawing came out at one point or some point. Is that the way you look at it? That way. It had a lamp in it at that point and the lamp was there for a long time and by the time my painting was done the lamp was gone. I don't know who took it. Nobody did. It wasn't me. And then I decided I wanted to add some things. After, this is after I literally painted this painting with all of these things on it in the chair and the table. I think I put the table in later, so I don't think I have the table there. And then later, I wasn't thrilled about it all. It seemed kind of boring and plain. So then I added, I don't know if you can see this, I added some flowers to the back. Oh, I'm sorry some flowers to the back and uh, a little picture up here. Things that I thought just might give it more visual interest. Now this happens over a period of time, you know, while you're painting. You keep getting more ideas for things to do. And then later on, when I had everything else done, I decided the chicks could live there too. So the chicks became part of it. And then you have to decide on colors. You know, we go through all the color thing. And um, I find that I do use a lot of the same colors when I look at these paintings that I showed other people. And this I actually, I was testing colors for different things. So I, you know, I ended up doing that while I was painting too. So I have a few of these little pieces that I've had while I've been working on this. And I did do, when I had a finished painting, from the one that I am working on now, I did trace it from my original painting, so I had something to work with to do the demo. So that's what those are all about.
So I did my drawing. I put it on the watercolor paper. I uh, selected my colors. And when I, I didn't have a paint palette when I did my first one. But when I did try to match the colors, that was not easy because I evidently was mixing colors and doing different things to get the colors I want. So my colors with the painting that I'm going to be doing today, and I've got most of it done because there's no way I'm going to get the rest of it done anyway. Um, but you can see the colors are not quite the same. But I did work with it as closely as I could. It's hard to revive colors on a painting that you've had around for a while and then come back to it. So I decided that I would do a color palette trying to match those colors, and so I made myself a palette. And I generally do that when I am working on a painting. Uh, then I know what I'm working with and, and um, have to deal with, and kind of where I want those to go. I also test my colors before I put them on the paper. Uh, if you find that you're doing your drawing and you don't like something in your drawing, don't use it. You will hate it later. You won't think it's okay then. Always go with your heart and your first instinct about it. Don't just put something in because you think it needs to be there. It doesn't if you don't like it. You've got to love it. So we will work on with this now. There. Okay, I'm sorry. So we're just going to continue on with this a little bit, and I'll talk about the <coughs> colors and the way I paint a little. Okay. If y'all can't, yeah, keep reminding me. I'll try to keep my head out of the way. That's even harder. I always use the Dorlar uh, acetate for the one reason I mentioned, to put the paint on and then see if you like the color. The other thing I do is I use this when I'm painting to keep me from making a mess, to try to keep the, when I'm painting, to keep me getting fingerprints and different things on the paint uh, because it's real easy to be painting along and have some paint drop onto it or you have some on your finger and get it on your painting. So I try, I always end up using something like this. If I'm using a larger painting, I use the larger pieces of the acetate. I had all my colors together in a box for the paintings that I uh, was working on. So I just took out the ones that I still might be working on today with to use. I just did something recently that I'm real happy with. I took my paper towels and started cutting them up into little squares. Is that OCD? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> because, you know, if you're working in a little tiny area and you've got a dab something. This is just absolutely wonderful. So I've started doing that. That's the tip of the day. Oh, really? So anyway, I have the Viva. These are the Viva. And that's the only thing you should use if you're painting, because it is the absolute best for absorbing. Don't use regular paper towels. They're horrible. But Viva is perfect. Okay. Oh, so am I going too slow? Am I going too slow? Well, I, I don't mind. I like that. Okay. Good questions. Oh. Uh, so I'm only going to do a few little things here that are left to be done. Did you see? I uh, find the cat in the painting. The name of the painting is Bad Cat. I'll tell you a story about that. I don't. I don't know where you all are from, but uh, I'm in Boca Raton. And I take my paintings to ProLab to do prints for me and to put them on a disc. And now it's not a scan disc, it's a flash drive. So we're up to date. And uh, he said he looked at that painting for half an hour and he couldn't find the cat in the painting. He knew the name of it, but he could not find the cat. <laughs> it's because it's just not in the focal point. And I did it on purpose to see if people pay attention. <laughs> they do, sort of. 
And it was black. I thought, you know, that would really show up. It was black. Your eye would go there. But his didn't, not right away. He probably looks at so many paintings, he just does an overall thing and starts working on color and doesn't really see the painting. Do you think that's what happened? I have some water somewhere. Let me get your drink. Here it is. Excuse me. How many of you paint with gouache? Good. Wash. Um, <clears throat> wash is um, water media. Acrylic, wash, and uh, watercolor are all water media paints. And they all have different um, ways to use them. Water, color, and gouache are exactly the same thing, except gouache has white chalk in it. That's the only difference. Wash is a little creamier in the tube. I think it actually dyes in the tube faster than watercolor does, because if you have it around long enough, you can't get the paint out anymore. But um, the thing I like about it is that it everything does come out flat and smooth usually when you paint with it. If you don't put too much paint on, then it can work like watercolor. And uh, if you want it you know, to look more like wash, then you put a little bit more paint on. It has a creamy texture when you're painting. You, yes, you can. You can paint over it and change the color because it is opaque. Uh, if it was real, real dark, I think I'd put a coat of white on it before I'd go over that. And if you get too many paint, paint uh, coats on it, say more than two usually, then it can start cracking. But I have read, and probably have experienced it, but I don't remember it. If you uh, just take a damp brush and work it, you can smooth it back out and it'll be okay. So it's really durable. But if you're using the acrylic, it isn't going to work that way. It's not going to crack either, I don't think. So I think we're going to paint the chip. They're so cute. No, I just paint. I might add, put a little water on the paper here and there as I go along. Cut that something I wanted to show you, so I will do that. Just so you can see how it goes on. I'm glad I'm the last one of the day. It'll take me a while to clean up. That's okay. And I'll use a color you can see here. Just use the blue. I really like the blue, right? This is Ultramarine Deep and it's regular gouache. Is it regular? Yeah. Pardon me? What is what? Oh, it's just plain gouache. It's not gouache acrylic. But some of my colors, a lot of them actually are gouache. It's called gouache acrylic. But it is really an acrylic paint, but it's gouache. So I w that hasn't been out real long. You can add a little water to it to make it uh, just a little bit less thick. And the wonderful thing about gouache is when it dries, it dries flat. You know, you don't see streaks. Well, you do with some of it. There's certain colors that don't, um, that are more like watercolor. Raw umber, I think, is one of them. This color in here, it doesn't tend to go on the same way no matter how thick you leave it. I'm left-handed. I like Holbein. That was easy. <laughs> I do like Holbein. Um, it's a good quality paint. You could count on what you get. You know, you can count on it to do what it's supposed to do. I have some other ones, but I like the Holbein the very best. So this is just showing you a little example of 
You, I'm not going to lift it up because I watch people do it. It's better if you don't lift it up. But it, it goes on very nicely, smoothly. And when that dries, it'll look all the same color and very flat. So it's real easy to work with in that regard. If you, which I have done, drop a drop of water on it on your painting here, you could straighten it out. In other words, you can take your brush, a damp brush, and kind of work it to where it looks smooth. But even though it is smooth, if you do brush strokes on it, you know you're going to change the tone a little bit in your painting, but it's not going to look that bad, at least not on my paintings. Maybe if it was really perfect, it would. can ask questions while I do this. The most boring part of a demo is watching the artist paint. That's hard to do, you know, when you're trying to think about what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> when I started painting, uh, I lived over in Port I live. I came from. I lived in Port Charlotte for '63 through '69, and um, I actually a lady wanted to do a portrait of me, so I had her. I told her that she could if she'd teach me how to paint. So she did the portrait, and she gave me one painting lesson and um, two painting lessons, and she told me I'd never be an artist. That's probably what really got me going. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't paint. Uh, that was in like 1966. I didn't paint again, I don't think, until I moved to the Keys. And uh, we had a mom and pop motel. And that gets boring pretty fast. Boring in the sense of the work involved. But in terms of the people, it's never boring. It's always fun. So that was a lot of fun. But I wanted to do something instructive, I guess you'd call it. So I started, uh, they have Keys Community College in Marathon. I was up in uh, Grass Keys, right above. So I signed up for a watercolor class. And I'll never forget the man. His name was A-P-E-L-L. -A -P -E -L -L. He was a uh, graphic artist in New York City and moved to the Keys and decided to teach a painting class. So he was my first teacher. And he was the most inspirational person in the world. He was so encouraging. There was no one in that class that couldn't paint after he got through working with you because you just loved him so much you tried. He was fantastic. And uh, I always attributed that to me to staying with it and working at it. The first thing I painted was a pelican in, um, that wasn't in his class. I painted a pelican in, uh, I'm getting water on here already. I don't have my guide on there. But he was so good about uh, this style of teaching and encouragement. Now I'm just straightening out my little mistake here already. That's what these are for because it's just a small area. So it works well. Okay, so we're just going to paint the chick. And I'm painting them some different colors, so I'll get the colors. The only, the only real problem I see with wash is that you do have to be careful about the drops of water. Even though you can correct them, you still want to um, try to avoid anything like that. Because the nice flat look is what's so wonderful about wash. It looks pretty up there on the screen. Thank you. <laughs> it's a 
surprises me. It looks so cool. <laughs> it's the colors. I love the colors. I think that's the most fun thing about painting for me is the mixture of the colors. And it starts to get old. It's harder to get out of the tube. These are the stems of the flowers here. <clears throat> and the leaves. Sure. I painted, uh, when I first did my copy of this, when I traced it, I had all of the design stuff in it that's in the painting. Then I realized that was a bad idea because I had to paint the whole wall. So I um, just did the, draw, the, the tracing with just the large items and then I painted my green background and then I painted the uh, floor. I'm going, I would trace on top of it with the uh, sheet that I have that already has the drawing on it to put the other things in but that stuff I can just draw in anyway. Same with the chicks, you know, I only did a few chicks on this one because I'm, I'm not going to do the whole painting all over again anyway. This one will be a little bit different by the time I'm through. And I didn't draw them in any way, all the uh, flowery things. These, this is pretty much of what I had actually put onto it with the paper. When I did the other one, I just did parts. I painted part of it. And then I added the blue chair later on my painting because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do over there. And then later put in this table with the uh, urn on it. So that's how it really ended up developing. I was already painting it and that much done before I got to that part on the other one. And then I added the flowery things, and then I added the chicks later, and then the these lines after that. Because it just looked like it needed a little bit more. But now when I look at the simp in the simple form, I kind of like the simple form too. <laughs> of the paint? Well, I'm just, uh, if I'm painting on top of something, it would be two or three layers. But it takes it fine. You know, there's not a problem with that. If you don't, if I did this large mass three times, that probably would want to start cracking after three coats of, you know, of the texture of the paint. If I w did it real thin, it wouldn't. But when you're painting with gouache, the idea is that it's a little thicker paint. And it's easy to work with. It's real easy to work with. The same thing with watercolor, though, you have to be careful as to how much you have on your brush when you're painting because you don't want it dripping all over the place, but you also don't want it too thick or too thin. I do want to say something to you all. How many of you have your FWF? Your signature. I have been painting for 41 years. Been coming to Florida watercolor since 1989. That's when I started entering shows. And it's taken me till last year to get my signature membership. So don't ever get it. You'll get it. It's true. You know, if you just keep on. And I'm what, uh, you know, Betsy Dillard Stroud? Anybody know Betsy Dillard Stroud? I'm a Sunday painter. I'm really a Saturday painter. 
we have a group of us that paint together and we have so much fun. We get together on Saturdays. There's four of us. At one point, there was probably five. But we paint from uh, about 11, 11 o'clock or so until four or five in the afternoon. And we learn from each other. It's nice to have a group of people to paint with. We go to conventions together. Uh, when they had the National Watercolor Society show, we went to that together. It's just great. You know, if you, you know people in your area or in clubs that you belong to, uh, form a little group. It's just fun. I also belong to another group. There's 12 of us that uh, get together and have breakfast at someone's home. That person makes the breakfast. And then we critique each other's work. We bring one or two paintings with us and we critique, critique each other's work. And I cannot tell you what we learned from that. It's just a really great thing to do. And it keeps you painting. You know, if you have to have something ready for a show, or you're going to have some going to somebody's house and they're taking the time, or you're taking the time to do it, you better have something painted to show or they're going to give you a bad time. So it's inspirational. Acrylic dries and you can't get it off, but you can get the gouache off. Unless you use the gouache acrylic, which is what they're selling a lot of now. Acrylic is plastic. Yes, this is water. It's still water-based. Acrylic is water-based too, but it's plastic. It dries plastic, right? Wash looks like wash, and the acrylic paint sometimes has a, a sheen to it. And it and the acrylic wash still has the wash look, which is the flat, matte look, I guess you call it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I don't know why they did it. I personally don't think it was a good idea, but I don't think they would have consulted me. I don't really see the purpose in it. Well, it makes it permanent. I guess that's a purpose, isn't it, unto itself? But I guess you could do that if you put some kind of a coating over it anyway. But I don't know. That I, know. I did one painting that I worked forever on, my Sea Shepherd painting. And by the time that I got through with it, I didn't love it anymore. But I put um, someone I knew who uh, painted always did a watercolor base of some kind of a, she did mostly paintings that look like underwater scenes. And then she'd put a coating of a medium, gloss medium or matte medium or something over it. And then she'd do her painting on top of that. And she would coat that when she was through. So I decided I'd do that to that particular painting. And I ended up putting four coats of some kind of stuff on it. And by the time I got through, the painting was too dark. So I don't do that anymore. It wasn't a good idea. It didn't work for me. But there's so many different ways and things that you can do to your paintings if you want to. But I kind of think that... I don't think there's anything wrong with adding di different kinds of paints to a painting to make it successful because sometimes that's what you have to do. If you have some awful color and you can't cover it, then you're going to have to go to the next stage. I have no idea what how time we're doing on the clock. I mean, I have to think for 15 more minutes. <laughs> I'm I'm open to questions. Any questions you have, you're I'm wel welcoming them. I 
I don't know. I would be actually. It's just the same as watercolor. You can you can put a coating over the watercolor, but they tell you if you get in once, get out. Don't you can't go over it more than one time, or it's going to start uh, coming up. It'll start uh, spreading. I think so. I don't know that I would want to do that. Yeah, they're allowing some now, some varnish coats. Okay, and people are probably... I'm looking for my stem, I lost my stem. People are probably not... Uh, doing that unless they do something maybe that's more like acrylic. But I guess some people do want to coat their watercolors. I've heard them talk about it. Well, Mark Mahaffey starts with the coating two coats yeah yeah I know they're lying that way. I haven't ever done any of that I'm the traditional framing type have you do you like it that's good It depends. Well, that one that I showed you, that was the spiritual one with the fear not. Was the name of that one? I did that painting within a half an hour. But the other painting that Lewis and Clark were here that had, that took me two years. I worked three years on painting. Because, you know, you have them done, you think, but then you look at them and you say, it's not, it's really not done. So you just keep on working on it. But it depends. Some of them go quickly and some don't go quickly. I'm not a fast painter. Some people are. But I am not a fast painter. Never have been. Because I like that flat finished look more than any other look. I've been going to all these demos and watching these people that start going like this on the paper. Yeah, I've never done that. <laughs> Just not the way I paint. And yet they come up with these magnificent paintings. No. On the palette, I, then I know what I'm getting into. Otherwise, I wouldn't know. And I'd probably be mixing and remixing 15 times more. No, because I hated all that. I always hated it. The first. The first painting I did was of a, um, I want to say it was, that was the second painting I did was of a uh, bait bucket. I lived in the Keys at the time. We had the mom and pop hotel. A bait bucket and a, um, um, some other fishing, a tackle box next to it. Set it on the little table in the room and um, took a photograph of it. Or I didn't. I actually sat down and painted it. But the shadow was on the wall. So I painted that, and I painted the shadow, and it was really beautiful. I was amazed that I could even do that, because it was a shadow, and I would think I could paint like that. But it turned out very nicely, and I've done um, some realistic painting, but I'd rather not be bothered with all the shading and the shadows. I just like to give you my message, I guess, simply, and, and more in a fun way than all that serious stuff, like perception architectural buildings. I, I don't care about doing that. I can if I have to, because I did go to art school, but I don't like it. I just rather do the ways things in a simple form and maybe construe them in a little different way. So you have to stop and think about it. That's I'm more interested in piquing your interest and giving you something to smile about. That's kind of my theory with painting. And I do really enjoy that. <laughs> I'm lazy. 
No, it's not lazy at all because I work harder at probably having this kind of a look. Uh, it's just that's what I enjoy. It's, I feel like it's more pure. That's right. Yeah, that's the truth, too. I just think I'm avoiding them. I don't feel like I'm breaking them. I just feel like I'm avoiding them. I don't want to have to do all that. I can still achieve the same thing. I teach um, watercolor class. Well, it's not, it's not watercolor. It's whatever I give them. Uh, I work at, uh, teach at a senior center. I teach one day a week. And uh, I've been doing it for 10 years. And a lot of the same people are still in the class. And we just have so much fun together because we all know each other so well now. And I try to come up with different ideas and things to get them to think because it's mostly a fun class. But I throw in things where they learn whether they know it or not. And uh, we just have a real nice time with it. And they keep me thinking about what we need to do. Because if they have something that they'd like to paint, then they tell me and we, we get whatever we need for it together and do it. And I also have done some you know things like stamping and pours and that kind of thing. So I've touched on various things. But I always come back to this particular kind of painting. I find, pardon, go ahead. No, but I bet you look for it. <laughs> I fooled you. It works, though. For me, it works. Well, this actually, you know, this is very plain and flat, but I do have different shades of the on the couch, and then some things I don't have anything on the table. I did a whole bunch of stuff to the table. Why, I don't know. But it doesn't bother me. And I, I was looking, when I was painting it again and looking at it, I thought, why did you do that when you didn't do it to the other things? I don't know. I just did. And I do have dark legs in the back there and the lighter in the front. But I didn't do that on the chair to make that look different. And then I did this. I call this uh, Caput Mortem, that color. I love that color for the footstool, so it has some depth, I guess, but I didn't do it on everything. Okay. Uh, everybody, anybody have any other questions? I do have uh, some paintings and things. Uh, prints that I've made, if you're interested in any of them, they're for sale. And uh, I think I pretty much showed you most of my different styles of work. But it isn't. It is, you're right. It's in that it's maybe a little different style, but it's still the same simplified form of painting. The flowers, I think I did a little shading in here and there. And I had fun with that. I don't, This painting was just a painting that developed, and it was just so much fun to paint. Most of them are. But um, I like the designy look sometimes in things. It's the, it's the paper. I, I wanted her to stand out, but I wanted all the color, so I thought, well, I'll just do it just white. I did do green lines. I outlined it in with the screen pen, very fine pen. But I just didn't. I wanted the, I love the flowers, so they had to be important. Yeah. It sort of works like that. I look at a lot of magazines. Um, Everywhere I go, I notice it. We all do. If you're an, I, they say you wake up when you become an artist. I've heard this from people at the beginning, and it sounds sort of silly. But paint a few things and walk outside and see what you're looking at everything for an idea of something to do, 
or you're appreciating the color, or you're amazed by the sky. We didn't notice all these things before we started painting. We just lived our silly lives. But then once you start painting, and my husband, Jerry, is a photographer, so we have, we have a lot in common because we appreciate the nature or whatever we see. There's something that we can notice about it because we're all visual people. And you have to be visual in order to paint. But you do notice more once you start painting or drawing or whatever kind of art form that um, you use, such as the photography. And I know I didn't notice it before I got involved. I didn't start painting until I was, I think, 40, 38, somewhere in there. So I've been painting quite a while. But I do love it. Any other questions? I would love a critique on this one. Because I got some snotty remarks from some of my friends about this one. <laughs> and I love it. Just because it's off key, you know, it's just not the same old thing. But to me, it was very spiritual, and that white thing just appeared on my paper. So it became a spiritual painting, whimsical but spiritual. Black swan meets spirit in the sky. Spirit might have been drinking, I don't know. <laughs> But that was okay with me. <laughs> but it was really fun. Most of them are. And these three fish are the same three fish that are on serving fish dinner. In case you, that's what's a stencil. You know Karen Knudsen? You ever take a workshop from her? She's the one that taught us to make stencils out of cardboard. Out of cardboard. And you just glue them on a, another piece of cardboard and you have your stencils. And a little piece of that big white tape in the back, you fold it so that it becomes your stamp. You can do it with anything. On this one, oh, I started playing around back here. I just wanted to see what would happen. All this is just playing around. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just filling in. And it turned out it's really a farm, and there's a graveyard there. But it's a nice graveyard. That's probably because of the spirit. He had to come down for a reason. See, there's a story here. And this is a farm. This is a field of strawberries or something, don't you think? And there's a little tiny creek here, or else the black swan wouldn't have been able to get there. So I had to put that in. And this is a road that goes up to the cemetery. And this is a waterfall. And these are like bushes or trees right here. And I don't know what this is. This could be rice patties with other colors in it. Could maybe flower gardens that somebody's growing somewhere? So you might guess this was not a planned out painting. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.